Marlborough is a highway station. We cover from the NTSA border all the way up to Stewart's Well, which is about 200 k's worth of Stewart Highway. Plus we cover about 150 to 180 k's along the last of the highway, which is the road that leads out to Ayers Rock. So apart from traffic duties, we also take care of two Indigenous communities. Luke Gailey has been the local cop in Colgra for the past year. Born in Sydney, it's about as far out of his comfort zone as he could get. Family-wise, it was we just had our son and that sort of stuff, so we knew if we wanted to do this, it had to have to happen before he went to school. Um, also, I'd done some relief work and quite really enjoyed it. Um, so we started looking for, for somewhere that would suit us for a couple of years before our son went to school. Go, 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 go! Oh, oh good one! When we lived in Tennant Creek, Luke did a little bit of relief work out at um, remote stations for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I'm going to arrest you. <laughs> and that was really nice, see a few different places. We moved back to Darwin and Again, Luke did a few different remote stints at places across the top end and we thought, well, if you're going to do all this remote relief and you're away all this time, why don't we just go remote together and, and see what it's like to live proper remote. Luke joined the Northern Territory Police Force after a stint in the military and tour of Afghanistan. Today we're off to Fink at Petula. Uh, to do a general community patrol and uh, just do some general follow-ups of things that have occurred over the last week or so. He's found the most rewarding aspect of the job is by far the day-to-day -day interaction, where you become more than an officer, but a part-time counsellor, teacher and even footy coach. Uh, yeah, I enjoy it. We have a, we have a good relationship with uh, the Fink community and they, they generally enjoy our company. It's good to uh, be involved with them uh, in this atmosphere as, as well as uh, it gives you a better ability to, to engage with them um, on a more one-on-one -on -one level and uh, not so much just being there to lock them up but being able to get the kick the footy with the, the kids every now and again um, and just talk to them as as a friend sometimes and, and help them out with things as well as doing what we, we have to do. So. Hey Lorraine, how are you? How's night patrol going, alright? That's alright, even busy. Yeah? Yeah. How are the kids going? All good. Yeah? How many kids had night? Sorted that problem out from the other day? Yep. Yeah, oh, cool. While most of the time things are pretty calm and sleepy around here, there's a few days of the year that all changes. The population explodes from anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 people uh, between spectators, competitors. Um, the Fink community also runs their sports carnival that weekend. So you get a lot of uh, Indigenous people from other communities travelling to, to the sports carnival. Um, it's quite amazing to see the, the transformation over about a four or five day period. It's, it's incredible. There's also tourist season and the main highway connecting the territory to the rest of the country and the famous iconic Uluru. Afternoon. Good, How are you? Right? Yeah, good, thank you. So just an RBT today. Anything alcoholic to drink at all? No. No? No worries. What I need from you is a sample of your breath by providing one long stage blow through the tube and I'll let you know when to stop, OK? When you're ready. Stop. Have you got your licence on you today? Yeah. It gets very busy, so I guess the best way to explain that would be, so we do RBTs um, all year round, um, and off-peak season we can set an RBT for hours and, and get 50 people, um, or in, as opposed to during the tourist season we can do an RBT for an hour and 
we'll have two, three hundred people tested. So it's, it's, I don't have the exact numbers, but yeah, it's, it's quite large. Lots of traffic, long driving distances, and inexperienced drivers can make this job merciless. They've seen their share of trauma. Within remote work, you're expected to do a lot more. Um, so as police, obviously we're first responders across the board and we'll respond to similar jobs, whether it's Palmerston, Darwin, uh, Alice or out here. Um, the difference lies in, in the support you then get post that. Um, sometimes uh, for crashes, for example, there can be a, a delay in, in, in support. Um, where you've then got to step up and, and fill the gaps. It's also a huge pastoral region. Sprawling cattle stations, the main industry down this way. Yeah, I think there's 24 cattle stations. We deal with them in a varying degree. Some we hear, hardly hear from and, and others we'll hear from quite a bit. So. What could some of the issues be? Um, there's generally not issues coming from them. Their general contact will be uh, MVR related and, and those sorts of things, firearms and and licensing for their staff and that sort of stuff. Um, some of the issues that have arisen in the past is uh, disputes over cattle and, and, and things like that that, that get sorted generally in-house. It's a life foreign to many, but Louise has used her unique situation to tell the rest of the world about remote policing through a Facebook page. Well, I thought it would be an interesting way to share with other people what it's like to live remote and share also what it's like to be a police wife as well. And I thought it'd be interesting when you have those odd stories or funny days to, to get it out there and let people know that things can happen and change so quickly and just sort of shed a light on what it's like to be a remote family. Time in the outback, however, is coming to a close. No, I think we'll, we'll definitely miss the peace and quiet in the big yard and, and being able to let our little man yell and scream and run around without worrying about neighbours too much. So, yeah, we'll definitely miss it. It's been really special for us. It's not something a lot of people get to do. And it's not something a lot of people can say they've even had the opportunity to consider. So for us it's been really interesting and for Emmett growing up out and seeing this place he can always have some pretty unique stories to tell people and we've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time together and see lots of different things around the area as well that insiders knowledge of really cool little spots to go that if you were just passing through you'd never get the opportunity to see. So we've been really lucky I think coming out here. Bye.